Hello people, in this video, let us look at the clinical examination of a case of hernia. So, a patient comes to you, right? And uh, they have uh, some uh, swelling and let us say it is in the inguinal region. Okay, in the inguinal region, they have a swelling. So, it could either be direct or indirect, whatever um, hernia, but it is there in the inguinal region. Let's say there is a history they are telling you of a swelling. It could be in the inguinal or any region. Okay, <clears throat> but we are here, we are taking the example of inguinal region. Now, what happens when this person lies down? right when this person lies down that swelling disappears okay and when does it increase this swelling whenever they are walking or something this uh, size of the swelling increases okay uh, initially this is the case it disappears appears etc but later due to adhesions it cannot be reduced okay now these people will tell you uh, there could be pain okay if there is pain if there is dragging pain the content of this uh, hernia could be an omentoceal but if it is an uh, bubble then it is called as enterocele there they are not talking about dragging pain but if there is dragging pain it will be omentoceal okay the, and this pain can be referred to the umbilical region so let us say that this um, inguinal hernia okay this hernia contains the omentoceal okay it is con containing the omentum so it's called as omentoceal that time the pain will radiate to the umbilical area okay that's what they are saying okay if there is severe pain in the hernia vomiting is there irreducibility is there it can be obstructed hernia obstructed hernia means what so now let us say this is the hernia sac inside this there is the bubble what is there your bubble your small intestine something is there now what will happen if this gets obstructed right so basically the the path of your uh, stools right your uh, feces is obstructed then what will happen this will be an obstructed hernia so the person will have vomiting and is, it is also irreducible so if the person has severe pain there is vomiting irreducibility it will indicate an obstructed hernia then the person can tell you that they have been having chronic cough or constipation or difficulty in passing urine all this you should ask because it suggests that the hernia cause is this that he's coughing so much that the viscera has come out of the uh, body is trying to come out of the uh, right body wall or it could be constipation he's stressing uh, so much or there could be difficulty in passing urine probably because of an enlarged prostate or something so uh, you will have to ask all this okay so these are the presenting complaints now coming to history you will have to ask some surgical history etc did he have any appendectomy so, if he had an appendectomy, it can mean that the uh, ilioinguinal nerve was damaged during this appendectomy, right? And uh, what will happen? There is a weakness, right, of this uh, transversus abdominis. So, what will happen? There will be weakness of the abdominal wall. Very good, people. So, you have collected all the history, okay? Now, let us go to inspection. After history, what will you get? Let us say inspection. Now, inspection, what will you do? You will make the person stand, okay? And you will have to check for the swelling. So, here again they are talking about the swelling in the inguinal region. You will check the size, etc., the borders, the surface, skin over the swelling, etc. You will check. Then you will ask the patient to cough. If there is expansile impulse on cough, then it is a diagnostic feature of hernia. See, expansile impulse on cough. See, guys, look at the sentence here. Expansile impulse on cough is a diagnostic, uh, it is diagnostic of hernia. So, you will check the person in. Standing position, you will ask him to cough. Expansile impulse on cough, okay, will is diagnostic of hernia. If there is peristalsis, then it will indicate enterocele because what is there if there is a, um, in the hernia, if there is bubble, right? If the bubble portion is there, then if there is peristalsis that you can see, then it indicates an enterocele that is the bubble is there inside it, okay? Fine. We are continuing with the inspection. You will see if there is any scar. If there is a scar on this uh, swelling, it may, can mean that it is an incisional hernia, right? If there is a ragged scar, then it can indicate an infection. Next, if it is a direct hernia, usually it will be bilateral because direct means that it is coming out of a weak wall. Usually it will be bilateral, okay? As soon as the patient stands up, it will come out that will be a direct hernia. So, did you understand what and all to see? You should look for the sensational scar. You should look for uh, uh, any peristalsis, right? All that they have told you in inspection. Now, shall we go to the uh, palpation, guys? So, we are. what are we looking at in this video? We are looking at 
examination of hernia, clinical examination of hernia in that we have finished uh, inspection, now we will go to palpation. All the inspectory findings you will confirm, basically palpation, you will say the temperature, local price of temperature is there or not, is it tender etc. Then uh, inspectory findings confirm, now you will talk about the swelling, it is soft, if it is if it gurgles, it is an enterostine, you can understand it is the bowel content, right, that is the small intestine, so if it gurgles, if it is granular, it is omentoseal. So, there are only two things they are talking about, either it is the small intestine or the omentum, if it is a small intestine, then you are calling it as the enteroseal and you will have, you can feel the gurgling, if it is granular, it will be the omentoseal because it will contain omentum. When you ask the patient to cough, focus guys, expansile impulses felt at the root of the scrotum. So, um, when you ask this patient to cough, what will you feel? You will feel something is coming and expanding, you can feel it, right? <clears throat> so, that is the expansile impulse this is diagnostic of hernia they told you but this expansile impulse on cough you remember even in laryngoseal especially this trumpet blowers etc in the neck neck swelling you have seen laryngoseal seal right that also when they cough it can increase so can you see this laryngoseal here in the neck of this person so basically on valsalva it's showing right so basically val laryngoseal etc you have studied in ent right you will see it in trumpet blowers etc all these ga gas, uh, what is this, glass blowers, weight lifters, etc. But obviously the location is so different, isn't it? There can be meningo seal, etc. Anyways, so basically where are we? We are looking at palpation for uh, a case of hernia. So basically we ask the patient to cough, etc. Now getting above the swelling. So in the standing position, if you try to get above the swelling, focus people, are you able to understand? So basically you are trying to get above the swelling. So now what will happen? At the root of scrotum, the spermatic cord is palpated. Okay, in case of in uh, in case of complete indirect hernia, the spermatic cord cannot be felt. Okay, this is called as getting above the swelling not possible. So when can you get above the swelling in case of complete indirect hernia? Let's understand this. Look at this. So this is the complete indirect hernia. You can see, um, you can see that the, the, there is the content coming all the way down, isn't it? So, this is complete. So, you cannot get above the swelling. So, in cases of complete indirect hernia, spermatic cord cannot be felt as the naked structure because it is covered anterolaterally by the sac. This is called as getting above the swelling not possible, negative. Negative means you cannot get above the swelling, okay? Getting above the swelling is a test to differentiate scrotal swellings from inguinoscrotal swelling. If it is only scrotal swelling, let us say this is the uh, swelling and this is only the uh, swelling here okay then you can get above it you can get above it right here you can feel the spermatic cord let us say so you can get above it that means it is only a scrotal swelling only a scrotal swelling you can get above the sw swelling however if it is complete like this right if it's complete like this you cannot get above the swelling so it means to say this is a complete indirect hernia this one is a scrotal swelling okay they are not exactly calling it as uh, hernia here. They are saying if it is a scrotal swelling, you can get above the swelling. If it is a complete indirect hernia, you cannot get above the swelling. Did that become too much guys? Okay, anyways, relax. Okay, let's continue. Hmm? <coughs> reducibility. See, reducibility means you will ask the patient to lie down. You will see whether the uh, size of the swelling becomes small or less. Okay, so basically uh, if it is re reducing, right, it can be a hernia, right? But if it is hydrocele, it will not reduce. Best, best is to ask the patient to reduce because they would have reduced it so many times, they will be accustomed to reducing it. Okay. Coming to omento seal, initially you can reduce it, but later because of adhesions, you will not be able to uh, reduce it. Guys, it is quite obvious, isn't it? Look at this photo. Here, <clears throat> because there is no adhesion, if you just push it in, it will go. This is reducibility. But here, because of adhesions, what is happening, you will not be able to reduce it. Okay. So, reducibility, if it is omento seal, initially you can reduce, there, thereafter you can't reduce. <coughs> now, let's go back here. Then, there is something called as taxis, okay. So, you will try to reduce it. Ask the patient to reduce it, okay. Otherwise, what will you do? You will flex and medially rotate the hip and try to reduce. This is called as taxis. You will flex and medially rotate the hip and try to reduce that is called as taxis what is taxis if they ask you you will flex and medially rotate the hip and try to reduce okay if all this you do and you cannot reduce it will be irreducible hernia why will it be irreducible because of adhesions very good 
what are we looking at palpation palpation of what of a case of hernia so we have done a lot of things now let us go to one more thing which has a nice name guys it is called as external ring imagination test okay so basically this external ring imagination test means what you know so this is your inguinal canal this is your external ring here you will place your little finger okay which finger are you placing little finger okay then you'll ask the patient to cough if that hernia content comes and touches the tip of the finger that means it's coming via the canal so it is an indirect hernia so indirect hernia will touch what the tip of the finger but if it's a direct hernia it will come and touch the pulp of the finger so it will if it is direct hernia it will come and touch the pulp of the finger if it's indirect hernia that is it is coming via the canal it will touch the tip of the finger very good people that is the external ring imagination test but this causes discomfort to the patient okay anyways now people let us look at the internal ring also so internal ring occlusion test so not just external now they are trying the internal ring or the deep ring occlusion test okay i have just drawn it a little neatly let me draw internal ring imagination occlusion test so you will occlude this but before that first you will reduce if it is reducible you will reduce it and then you will occlude the internal ring how will you reduce uh, occlude the internal ring there's a photo for it with the thumb they are occluding the internal ring so this ring will be midpoint between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis so exactly midpoint they are going to locate the deep ring and they are going to occlude it with what with the thumb right and then you will ask the patient to cough what will happen if you ask the patient to cough so let me tell you so this is the inguinal canal external ring internal ring or the deep ring which you have occluded right and here is your you have reduced the swelling right and then only you have occluded now that you have occluded this with your thumb is it possible for the swelling to come out when the patient coughs no because you have blocked the path however a direct swelling will appear so you know that when you do internal ring occlusion test if swelling appears that is going to be a direct hernia as simple if swelling which was there before you have reduced and it does not appear when you have occluded it means it's an indirect hernia very simple if swelling is not seen it is indirect hernia okay what's the problem of this you should do it properly if you don't do results may vary there can be pantaloon hernia where it is mixture of both indirect and direct right okay next test is leg raising test guys look at this so leg raising test or head raising test either of them can be done based on whether it is the lower abdominal or upper abdominal so basically you can see head raising test or leg raising test so basically the weakness of oblique muscles is manifested right they are having some bulgings malgin bulgings this is an absolute indication for hernioplasty plasty means where wherever they are putting the mesh right so basically this bulging and all will indicate what it will indicate there is weakness of the ab oblique muscles in the abdominal wall that's why they have to do hernioplasty the mesh and all they have to put guys okay, some other tests are also there uh, may not be done uh, much look at this zeman's three finger method at least you should know about it you will use three fingers just use your three fingers guys uh, of which uh, hand let us say of your left hand the index finger you will keep on the deep ring the middle finger on the posterior wall above and lateral to the external ring and the ring finger you will use at the femoral ring so you are occluding everything looks like you are closing the deep ring you are closing the external one and you are closing the femoral ring now you will ask the patient to cough right and then you will know where you are going to feel it either you are going to feel it on the femoral ring that will be a femoral hernia you'll feel it on the uh, external ring that means it's coming via the inguinal canal right or if all the three you have occluded and still it's coming it could be a direct hernia right it's not necessary to perform this test in incomplete or complete indirect hernias something that you have to sit and think about okay per abdomen also you will check to check if there is any other swellings etc next coming to stricture urethra you have to look for phimosis how do you say that stricture urethra because you will have to retract the skin of the perpuce and rule out this so you can know if they are having some urinary complaints because of which they are straining themselves right per rectal also you should do to rule out prostatic enlargement guys do you understood right everything about the urinary part they are talking here 
respiratory system you should check because they can have tuberculosis etc which can make them cough 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 and that's why they will be having this hernia right okay then you will examine the opposite side also this person came with a right inguinal swelling then you check the left side also okay anyways for children they are uh, telling about something else some gornals test is there you can look at this if you want after this what what can you do guys hernia is anyways a clinical uh, diagnosis only otherwise you can if you want you can check everything about their uh, chest x-ray pulmonary function test etc to rule out the cause ultrasound you can do if you want if you just want to confirm then you can talk about ultrasound ct scan etc if they want to talk about some special types of hernias etc magnetic resonance imaging mri also they're talking about okay to rule out any other disorders looks like they're talking about okay so did you understand guys in this video we looked at the examination of hernia we looked at inspection we looked at uh, palpation and the investigations also history also we looked at right yeah bye bye